organisms occur in the body because of harmful harmful microorganisms, example anthrax disease. Anthrax disease affects both human as well as the cattle, and it is a disease caused by bacteria. Then one more disease is foot and mouth disease of the cattle, and this is caused by virus. So this is the way in which micro harmful microorganisms affect the animals. Next, let's see disease causing microorganisms in plants. So in plants also we get many diseases. Leaves of the plants will be affected, stems will be affected, the color of the plants will change. There may be withering of the leaves. All these are occur. Diseases occur due to microorganisms which are harmful. So they cause diseases in many plants. Plants like wheat, rice, potato, sugarcane, and apple. These are some of the plants which get affected by harmful microorganisms. And then, if the disease occurs, if the, if the plant is affected by the disease, how does it shows on the plant? The yield of the crops will be decreased. The quantity of the yield will be decreased. And how can these be prevented? These can be prevented by use of chemicals. If we spray chemicals, fertilizers, pesticides onto the plants, and these can be avoided. For example, citrus. Citrus canker is a disease which affects the lemons. And then the bhendi or the lady's finger have a yellow vein disease. So these diseases occur in plants because of harmful microorganisms. Then there is red rot disease and there are many diseases. So these can be prevented by spraying chemicals. So that is how diseases disease causing microorganisms in plants. Next is food poisoning. Suppose sometimes if you eat food outside or anywhere on the street side you get vomitings. That is nothing but food poisoning. It happens due to consumption of food which was not good and which was contaminated by microorganisms. So occurs this food poisoning occurs due to consumption of food spoiled by the microorganisms. Spoiled with microorganisms. And these microorganisms which grow on the food, they produce toxic substances and they cause illness and sometimes even death. So when there are microorganisms on the food, they release some toxins. And these toxins, if we consume them, we will get illness and sometimes even death. So it is important that we preserve the food and prevent it from getting attacked by the microorganisms. So let's see the different methods of food preservation. Next is food preservation. So generally food is spoiled by microbes or the microorganisms, right? Then spoiled food has bad taste, bad smell as well as the changed color. Suppose if we keep bread outside for a few days without using it, then we see green fungal growth on it. That is microbes developing on the bread. And then same with fruits also, mangoes, apples, outside in the atmosphere, they absorb atmospheric moisture and if you leave them like that for a few days, they start rotting or spoiling. So that is how microbes attack them. And then the fruits will have bad taste, bad smell and the color will also change to brown. So that is how food spoils. So there is a need that we need to preserve the food without being spoiled. So at home, how can we preserve the food? Let's see some of the methods. So first is chemical method. Salt and oil are the most widely used chemicals. Other than that, sodium benzoate, sodium metabisulfite. These chemicals are used for preserving pickles as well as the jams, squashes, etc. So chemical methods involves usage of salt, oil, sodium metabisulfite and sodium benzoate as preservatives. These things preserve and sometimes acidic acid also. So these chemicals preserve the pickles as well as the jams, squashes, etc. Next is preservation by common salt. The common salt what we use at home that is used for preserving many things. It is applied on the meat and the fish and sun dried sometimes. So this salt inhibit the development of bacteria on the food. So when we coat the substances with salt and sun dry it and store or only if we coat the substance with salt and store. The salt prevents the growth of bacteria. Thereby the food item will be stored without being small.
spoiled. So sun dried meat, sun dried fish, sun dried prawns, all these are available in the market. They are preserved with the help of salt. And other than that, mango slices, amla or gooseberry slices, all these are also sun dried with the help of salt and stored. So that is how preservation by common salt. Next is preservation by sugar. So jams, jellies, squashes, all these things are preserved with the help of sugar. Sugar inhibits the growth of bacteria. That is the reason they are preserved with the help of sugars, jams, jellies and squashes. Next is preservation by oil and vinegar. In the environment where there is oil and vinegar, the bacteria will not grow, the microorganisms will not grow. In the oil and vinegar environment, that is the reason food items can be preserved with the help of oil and vinegar. So with the help of oil and vinegar, fruits can be preserved, vegetables can be preserved, as well as fish and meat can also be preserved. Next is heat and cold treatments. So heat treatment, you see your mothers boiling the milk for some time after the milk reaches boiling point. So for boiling it for 2 or 3 minutes after the meal, milk reaches the boiling point 100 degrees centigrade. Preserves the milk by killing all the microorganisms. Boiling the milk kills the microorganisms in it. So that is heat treatment. Then cold treatment. We preserve the less leftover food in the fridge, right? Fridge has low temperatures. So that is the reason food is preserved in the low temperatures. So extreme heat also preserves the food. Extreme cold temperatures also preserve the food. We store the non-vegetarian meat sometimes in the freezers for long time because there in cold temperatures the microorganisms cannot grow. And even in high extreme high temperatures the microorganisms cannot grow. So that is heat and cold treatment and also milk packets. We see the pasteurized milk packets. On the milk packets, we see pasteurized liquid written. What does that mean? Milk will be heated to extreme high temperatures, like say 70 degrees centigrade, for 15 to 30 seconds, and then suddenly it will be cooled off for few seconds to extremely low temperatures. So, this method is called pasteurization of milk, and it was discovered by Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur was the scientist who discovered the pasteurization of milk, where the milk will be to high temperatures for 30 seconds and then immediately comes down to low temperatures for few seconds. By this method, the milk will be purified and this pasteurized milk without boiling also we can directly consume it. So that is also comes under heat and cold treatments. Next is storage and packing. So nowadays we have aluminium foils for packing, we have airtight containers, airtight packets. So with those we can help in storing and packing of fruits, vegetables as well as the meat and we can preserve them from being spoiled. If we preserve, store them in egg type containers, the microbes will not come and attack them. So that is how these are the few methods of food preservation. Let's see about nitrogen cycle. Atmospheric gas has about 78% of total nitrogen content. So out of 100% of atmospheric gas, nitrogen accounts for 78%. And nitrogen is an important constituent as a part of protein, nucleic acid and chlorophyll. So the blue-green algae and the bacteria, they fix the atmospheric nitrogen. So the soil, the roots cannot use the atmospheric nitrogen directly. They have to convert it into some other way and use. So who converts the nitrogen in other forms for the plants to use them? converts blue green algae and bacteria to fix the atmospheric nitrogen so that plants can use them and convert it into other forms. So bacteria and blue green algae fix the atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into compounds of nitrogen. Atmospheric nitrogen with the help of bacteria and blue green algae will be converted into compounds of nitrogen. These compounds of these compounds of nitrogen will then be utilized by the soil through the roots. So through the roots it goes to all parts of the plant. So why, how is this and why is this utilized? For synthesis of plant proteins and other compounds, these nitrogen compounds are utilized in the soil for the synthesis of plant proteins and other compounds. These compounds of nitrogen are utilized by the soil through the roots for the synthesis of plant proteins and other compounds. So this is how bacteria and blue green algae fix the atmospheric nitrogen, convert it into other form and then make it
it available for the soil and the plants. Next, when animals and plants die, there are remains of the animals and plants on the ground, right? Then what happens? The nitrogenous waste of their body, with the help of bacteria and fungi, will be converted into nitrogen compounds. So, the when plants and animals die, the nitrogenous waste of their bodies, of the dead bodies, in the presence of with the help of bacteria and fungi, will be converted into nitrogen compounds. So here also atmospheric nitrogen was converted into nitrogen compounds. In dead bodies also, dead plants and animals also, nitrogenous waste will be converted into nitrogenous compounds with the help of bacteria and fungi. And these nitrogen compounds will be again converted back into the atmospheric gaseous nitrogen with the help of one type of bacteria. So, again to the atmosphere, the gaseous nitrogen goes back in its original form. So, that is how that nitrogen cycle is being done in the atmosphere around. And this way, in this way, the percentage of nitrogen is constant in the atmosphere and it is not changing. Because of this cycle, where the atmospheric nitrogen will be fixed into form of compounds of nitrogen and will be utilized by the soil and then through the and will be utilized by the soil and through the soil, through the roots, it reaches the plants and then who eats these plants? Animals eat the plant. In that way, this compound of nitrogen will enter the animal body. So when the animals die and the plants die, the nitrogenous waste of their body with the help of bacteria and fungi will be converted into nitrogen compounds. So these nitrogen compounds will again convert it into atmospheric gaseous nitrogen form with the help of bacteria. So this is how nitrogen cycle happens and in this way the percentage of nitrogen in the atmosphere remains constant. There will be no change because the cycle is going on. The nitrogen is changing its shape, its compounds, its structure, again retaining back its 